With the first pick of the 2023 MLB Draft, the Pittsburgh Pirates pick Paul Skeens. This is a transformational player and a transformational person. This is the number one pick in the draft, and rightfully so, and he's a better person than he is a pitcher. With the number two pick in the 2023 MLB Draft, the Washington Nationals select Dylan Cruz. Can do everything as a person, blends humility with the right kind of edge. This tool set shows up every day to help their team win. Sometimes I'd hit him first because I wanted to start the game 1-0. Sometimes we hit him second to protect him. Sometimes we hit him third because we wanted guys on base and him to drive him in. That montage there from uh, at the MLB draft in Seattle a couple months ago as you take a look at Dylan Cruz and Paul Skeens helping LSU win their seventh national championship earlier this year in Omaha. And for the first time in history, one team had two players go one and two. Skeens number one to the Pirates, Cruz right behind him to the Washington Nationals and LSU head baseball coach Jay Johnson joining us now here on MLB Central. Jay, thank you very much for the time. We wanted to have you on because tomorrow was supposed to be the day where Skeens and Cruz would face each other in the minors, but the Pittsburgh Pirates announcing yesterday that Paul Skeens, they've seen all they need to see, so they're shutting him down. What have been your early impressions of your former players and their first foray into pro ball? Yeah, no surprise that they've had a ton of success. I mean, Paul is the best pitcher I've seen over one college baseball season in my 20 plus years of doing this. And you could really make an argument that Dylan had the best college career of any position player out there. So uh, I knew it would be a uh, not a steep ramp for them that they would transition well. Uh, they're both incredibly ready, you know, for the professional game. And I think they'll be in the big leagues in short order, helping the Pirates and the Nationals in a big way. Jay, watching you on that MLB Tonight desk during the draft, it was almost like you were a proud father. What was your reaction to hearing both of their names at that moment in time? Pretty amazing. I, I like being a part of that kind of history in terms of something like that had never been done before. And as I've talked about over and over again, I mean, these are players that are going to change both of these franchises, but they're going to be unbelievable leaders of those teams. They're going to be great in the community. They're absolutely the type of guys you want to be the face of your franchise. Jay, Mike Lowell here. You mentioned in the, in the draft coverage about both guys that they are better people than they are players. How impactful was that? What kind of spillover effect did those guys have with the other guys on the team? Yeah, it's unbelievable. Uh, last year's team was special in every form, but the player leadership is what really separated it. And I think when you look at Paul, you know, we only had Paul for really 10 or 11 months here and just his character, the way he went about his business, uh, held himself to an incredibly high standard and lifted everybody else around him. And when you look at Dylan, who'd already had two tremendous seasons, I mean, he's running hard down to first base every single time, uh, playing the game smart and aggressive, picking up teammates, uh, just unbelievable humility. And in both of their own ways, um, they set the standard and example that, you know, I would want every team that I ever coached to live up to. And when your best players are doing that, you guys know how impactful that is. Jay, I, I mean, obviously huge fan of both players. I, I want to ask, is the uh, university reeling a little bit with the Florida State <laughs> big win the other night? Oh, man. <laughs> I'm always, I, hey. uh, but, you know, in my mind, we're a baseball school. so uh. <laughs> Exactly. And that's what I want to get into. What's the message, and do you have another kind of crop of first-rounders coming down the pike in 2024? Winning the College World Series, what's the message to the next wave? Yeah, we're uh, excited. I think uh, this is a challenge every year. Each team's its own entity. We want to be strong as a program and carry things forward. And I think we've taken two things and take the things that were really good about that team, as I was talking about player leadership, and you want to emulate some of those things. But you guys have been a part of championships, and that next year, sometimes the best thing that you can do is leave the previous year behind, you know, mentally. And and there'll be time that we need to do that. And um, I'm confident that this group can do both. Certainly excited about some of the top end talent on the team, you know, on the mound with Thatcher Hurd and Luke Holman. Uh, Tommy White, in my opinion, is is one of the best hitters yeah. again like Dylan in, in college baseball history. So we're excited, uh, but we got to start our, our, our new journey and, and our own recipe for this team to be successful.
Jay, I always wonder with coaches, because you have a, a finite amount of time to leave your mark on a player, is there a certain value you feel like you have to instill? Are you teaching them about life as well as the game? What's your main goal every season? Well, I think when you're talking about LSU, our players, they want to be showcased on your network. Like they have a dream of becoming a major league baseball player. So at LSU, obviously it's about winning, but how we win is very important to me. And I want it to be a training ground for major league baseball. I want the best players to want to come here, not just because it's an unbelievable environment, but they know our coaching staff is going to do the best job of preparing them for major league baseball. So uh, it's about work ethic, attention to detail and all the things that we think are going to carry forward at the professional game for our players. Jay, you mentioned every year is a challenge. And, and I think this transfer portal now has put an extra challenge on, on coaches in every sport. Does the strategy of recruiting change a little bit because of this transfer portal? Because my understanding is if, if you get a guy from the transfer portal, he kind of can't transfer twice without sitting out. So is there a different kind of value to that type of player? Yeah, I think it's it's about fit, you know, both uh, mentally, physically, the needs of your team. You know, you could kind of compare it, I guess, to free agency in Major League Baseball. The teams that have done a really good job of that, they're trying to find the right pieces around the ones that they have. For me, as I just said, I want to be about development and developing our players and uh, we've been very intentional about the guys that we've gone after. We've gotten a lot of attention for it because we've gotten real superstar players through it uh, that are the best of the best. But if you look at how we did it, those were guys that we needed to plug in around the rest of the pieces that we have. And, and that's how I like to use it. And I definitely want to be a blend of high school players and then players from the portal that fit the needs of, of our program and our team at that time. Hey, Jay, I want to jump off that because I coach my kids' 13U travel team here in North Georgia, and we are stacked. And sometimes these parents at 13 years old, I, I, I try and get them to relax a little bit. Like, you're not, you don't need to get recruited or be on, you know, the perfect game power rankings at 13. It can be a slow burn. So what are you looking for from, from the high school kid, like, Kind of give, if you were giving a message to the parents on maybe relaxing a little bit this early. Yeah, for sure. I love talking about this. I think it's it's just in society, sometimes we all get consumed with the destination. Like what's the end goal in college and scholarship or MLB draft where, again, how you get there is important. And right now at 13 years old, it should be about development. It should be learning how to play fundamentals, competing really well, being a great teammate, and then developing your skill set. And if you do that every day over a long period of time, it's always my belief that good things will come, that results will follow a really good process. So I guess maybe chill out the best you can and, and enjoy the journey and, and focus on the development. Hey, real quick, Jay, before we get you out of here, you also coached Austin Wells, your time at Arizona. Uh, what, what should Yankee fans expect from him real quick? Well, I think they're undefeated since he got called. There up you to go. The big... <laughs> <laughs> Austin. Austin is one of the best players I've ever coached. Uh, unbelievable hitter. He's really done a great job uh, with the Yankees at developing as a catcher, which is really not a surprise with the work ethic. He's one of those guys that built his entire life around baseball. And I think Yankee fans are going to be very pleased with him for a very long time. Well, Jay, we appreciate you spending a little time with us this morning. Congratulations again on your national championship and best of luck to you and the Tigers in 2024. Thank you. Great seeing you guys.